All right, insect wings. You know them, you love them. Let's get into this. But just in case you don't know a whole lot about them, or love them that much, I'll give you a brief rundown. The vast majority of insect species are winged, but not all of them are, with about 5% of insects being wingless. The class Insecta splits to form two clades relevant to this presentation, these being Pterygoda, winged insects, and Aterygoda, wingless insects. While the development of a single trait may seem like an insignificant occurrence, insect wings are arguably the single most important driving force in their extreme diversification. This is due to wings opening up the possibility for insects to hold who knows how many niches. With this, it is important to try and understand how and when wings came to be on insects, to make their evolutionary history a little bit more clear. So let's start there, before I get on to explaining their lack of presence in the fossil record and sudden explosion, alongside debunking the oldest known flying insect. If we were to keep things simple and certain, we could define the first appearance datum as the rough time of arrival for insect wings as a trait. I'll go into more detail later, but even this is not so simple, as it turns out it's pretty easy to mix up classifications among early arthropods when all you have are little bits and pieces of them. Currently, we have certain fossil evidence of pterygoats from the Carboniferous, at around 328 to 324 million years ago. Now onto how insect wings formed. The general understanding now is that over generations, a group of pre-existing structures on a species body was modified to form wings. However, theories on what part of the body this was do vary. Our current understanding suggests that ancestral wings formed from either the thoracic turgum, the covering of the thorax, also known as the middle segment, an outgrowth of pleural tissue which exists near the insect's legs, or both. The pleural theory is sometimes brought up through the endi exite hypothesis, which states that these two body protrusions fuse to form ancestral wings. The following paper, which is the most recent one I could find on the topic, suggests that a combination of the two theories allowed for insect wings to form with both parts of the body contributing to ancestral wing formation. The reason for why this topic is in the air is because there are no recorded fossils that depict any transitional state from aterygotes to pterygotes, so all we can do is infer, which is really unfortunate. Now that we are done with the preliminary stuff, we can dig a bit deeper into some interesting fossil characteristics of the pterygota clade. I mentioned a first appearance datum based on actual fossil evidence. Well, as is normally done, many estimates were based off fossil evidence to try and determine when insect wings actually were developed, as first appearance datums are statistically improbable to represent the first actual appearance of a trait or taxa. Although, these estimates implied that pterygoats were present around 50 million years before fossil evidence was found. To keep things short, this paper states that these estimates are likely way off the mark due to outdated methods used to calculate the estimates, and defenses for the estimates being unreliable. For example, it was suggested that preservation biases were partially responsible for the time gap, with winged insects not preserving well due to their small size alongside other proposed factors. However, a quote from the paper suggests otherwise. Because Aterigo insects are so much less likely to become fossilized, relative to Pterygo insects, their presence in the fossil record during an extended interval from which pterygotes are unknown can be reasonably interpreted as true evidence of Pterygo absence. This quote is referring to the fact that wingless and winged insects are found preserved in the same areas and it is known that winged insects fossilize much more readily than wingless ones. Therefore, an absence of pterygoats from the fossil record, especially during the period in which they are estimated to exist without fossil evidence, but a presence of pterygoats, suggests a complete lack of them in the environment at the time. This is complemented by another characteristic of pterygota insects, this being the fact that they diversified extremely fast. With wings being such a novel trait for insects, and then possibly being some of the first, if not the first, organisms to achieve a form of flight, it is inherent that the ability would lead to a population boom which is evident after the first known winged fossil. It just makes sense that a population increase would increase the number of individuals getting fossilized. To summarize this point, a lack of pterygote fossils prior to a sudden explosion in quantity during a period that allowed for eight pterygotes to be fossilized, when they are less likely to do so relative to pterygotes, highlights the sudden appearance and expanse of pterygote insects. So it doesn't make much sense for them to be hypothesized to have arisen so much earlier than they are found when no fossil evidence at all is available in the time gap. This gap was estimated to exist because most other taxa diversify at this time scale, but wings were really special for insects and likely caused the sudden diversity spike. This allowed them to be entirely absent in the fossil record before becoming suddenly abundant. To really hammer in the importance of the expanse of winged insects, flight is able to aid in many aspects of an individual's life. Just some basic examples are enhanced predator avoidance, increased prey capture rates, enhanced locomotion, access to once unavailable resources, and more. Wings can also become adapted to serve functions other than flight, such as sexual or intimidation displays, thermoregulation, air retention, etc. In short, there are innumerable functions and abilities wings enable, so their appearance in insects cannot be understated, as their evolutionary history, for the most part, revolves so heavily around them. 
Earlier, I mentioned that the first appearance datum can be unreliable in the realm of arthropods. The consensus used to be that the oldest known flying insect, and basic run-of-the-mill insect, was Rhyneogatha hirsti, which existed around 400 million years ago. The following paper described that R. hirsti was mistaken as a pterygote, when evidence suggests that it was actually an early myriapod, resembling a house centipede. While it is disappointing that such a novel title was incorrectly assigned, there was ample room for error when it was deemed the oldest insect. This is because the technology available was significantly less advanced than it is today, making the arthropod fragments they had to work with all the more difficult to interpret correctly. To me at least, it is more disappointing that this supposed discovery likely influenced theories on how quickly insects were able to diversify after developing wings, downplaying their significance significantly. From this, we can infer just how finicky insects are to work with to get to these important discoveries. If you are wondering, I don't think there is an explicit species defined as the oldest flying insect anymore, but the oldest evidence exists as a trace fossil, speculated to be an impression left by an insect similar and related to modern day mayflies. I'll start wrapping things up now. I hope you've learned something here about insects at least, but hopefully I've explained why pterygotes are so important in the fossil record, with how revolutionary their unique trait is. Also, understanding how miscalculations and misinterpretations have skewed the general understanding of them, which not only applies here but to all of paleontology. With this, I hope I have made it clear that we should be more aware about double-checking paleontological work in general, as it is a field that has been around for a while, so significant mistakes caused by human or equipment error are bound to be prevalent. Anyways, that's that for this video. Thank you for watching.